you ready? Are you ready? Oh, are you ready to go? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready to go? Hello, it's Mr. T, and the tutorial we have uh, today is on graphing square root functions. Before we get into the particulars of the square root function, I want to first review what's called graphic or graph translations or function translations. Uh, when we graphed the quadratic functions earlier this year, we talked about function translations. Function translations are modifications to a base function and based on the way the modifications are done, we can predict what kind of shift or translation the function will take. When we are translating functions, we have uh, typically three things that we could do to the function. We can multiply the function by a constant. We could add a constant to the end of the function, or we could replace x with x plus or minus a number. So I've graphed the base function for the x squared function here, the parabola, if you remember that. And I've created a template here to look, explore the various translations. Now, right now, k is set to 0, h is set to 0, and a is 1. So if we replace those, we right now have 1 times f of x plus 0, or we just have our base function. So the blue function and the red are the same. So let's explore or refresh what happens with the k. If you remember, when we add a number to the whole function, it causes a vertical shift. So if we start making k positive, you can see that the, our function, the vertex in the entire function, is shifting upwards. And if we make k negative, which would result in subtracting a number from the function, we can see we are shifting down. Likewise, if we replace this x with x plus or minus a number, so we would have a quantity squared, remember that causes a horizontal shift. Now in the function here, this is negative, so when we put positive values for h, like let's just show like x plus 1, I mean h is, okay, h is 2, this would be x minus 2 quantity squared. So it looks like minus, but it, the h is positive, and you can see it shifted the graph right two units. So the bigger h is, the further right we go, and as h goes negative, we would now have, for example, x plus 4.2 quantity squared, and we have a left shift. Put that back to zero. Our a value, our multiplier in the front, so if we made it 2, See if I can get it to 2. This would be 2x squared because it's 2 times that function and you can see it's made it more narrow as 2 gets bigger. What it's doing is for each value of x the y value is in this case increased four and a half times so the y value when x is 1 here is now up to 4.5 so it causes what's called a vertical stretch. But probably more importantly is let's look at what happens as a goes negative, and let's just look at negative 1. So this would be f of x equals negative x squared, and you can see it caused a flip around the x-axis. So when we get into sketching the square root function, we will be starting with a base function, and we'll be looking at what kind of either horizontal shifts, vertical shifts, stretches, and or flips around the uh, x-axis that might occur based on various translations to the function. So let's look at now, let me pause this to bring up my other presentation. Let's look at the square root function. So on this graph, I've shown what we were just looking at, y equals x squared. I graph the line y equals x, and I graph the function y equals the square root of x. Now the reason I put these two functions on here, if you remember on the unit from for inverse functions, when we have two functions that are reflections around this line, y equals x, they're inverse functions. So our square root function is the inverse function of y equals x squared, the quadratic function. So it has the shape of a parabola or half of a parabola, but it's horizontal. 
So our base function, once we start looking at graphing square root of x, will be this shape here. Now notice the y equals x squared function, this continues to negative infinity on the x-axis and positive. So the domain of this function is all real numbers. Remember, we cannot take the square root of a negative number if we're dealing with real numbers. That would be an imaginary number. So as we go past zero here into negative numbers, the green graph, there's nothing over here. So the domain of this function is only for uh, values of x that make the whatever's under the square root uh, positive. So for the base function, it would be values of x greater than or equal to zero. Now again on the translations, remember a second ago we just reviewed graphically this function here. If we Whatever the base function is, if we added 5, it would shift it up 5. If we subtracted 3 like this, shift down. If we replaced x by these values, it would cause the shifts as I've shown here. And again, multiplying by negative flips it around the x-axis and they can go in combination. So if we had both replacing x with this expression and subtracting 2 in the end, we would have a combination. So let's look at our um, some samples. Hang on a second. I had to connect my tablet so that I could uh, write on my presentation here. So again, we're gonna, we want to sketch the graph of this. Because of this, we know that the base function is the square root function, so the base function again is going to look like that. And here we have a vertical translation, so we're going to be down 3, and this is going to cause a vertical stretch. So our base function, a noticeable point is this point at the end of the uh, square root function, which in the base function is 0, 0, so that point is going to move down 3. So we would be here. And the normal function would have this shape, and because it's a vertical stretch, it's going to be up, so maybe we could just estimate that function like that. If we wanted to uh, get a more accurate graph, again, we could move our this point down 3, and we could just pick a value for x. So a convenient value to pick would be 1. So if I put 1 here, the square root of 1 would be 1. 4 times 1 minus 3 would be 1. So we would have a point here at 1, 1. And then through those two points now, we can draw the uh, square root sh uh, function shape. Again, that goes on forever in that direction. Here it stops. It will not go negative. Remember this causes a left shift. Remember it does the opposite here for the h because in the template it's x minus h. So this would be x minus a negative 3. So we have a shift left of 3 units. And we do not have a multiplier here or so it's going to be just the basic uh, shape. We're just looking for approximate or rough sketches here, so you can uh, uh, just sketch it in. Now our last example, this is going to be a shift right. Whoops. Three, and this will be down five. So we are uh, right 3 from our sort of base point here, right 3 and down 5. Uh, there's no negative in front of this square root, so we're not flipping it. So again, our shape is going to look something like that. If we wanted it more accurate, we could pick a value of x, say a value of 4. Make a table of values. So if I picked x equals 4, I would have negative 5 plus the square root of 4 minus 3, which would be negative 5 plus square root of 1, which would be negative 4. So at 4, we're at negative 4, so my point would have been here. So we said here 4, negative 4. So I was probably a little steep. 
So that's all we're looking for in terms of sketching these uh, square root functions. Now lastly, as to finish up, let's look at a couple examples where we're given the graph and we want to match the function. So we know by this shape, we know that it's a square root function. So if we look at the end here, we can tell from this function we know that it's flipped. So we know a equals 1. And it's from this point, it's gone right 3 and down 2. So we know h equals 3 and k equals 2. So we could, even though it's not multiple choice, we could write our function here as negative square root of x minus 3 and then down 2 would be minus 2. So we've got this function right here, number c. And if we look at this one, we know it's not flipped, so we don't we want to rule out any other negative. It is left 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so we know h is negative 5, so we've got negative a negative 5, so that gives us this problem right here. And we could also, it was up 2, so that ruled out those. And this would be right 2 and left 2. So again, uh, here's some examples of the kinds of problems you'll be working on your homework and your uh, exit ticket, and good luck with uh, square root functions. Are you ready? Are you ready? Oh, are you ready to go? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready?